FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is May 5th, 2020. Well, my next guest has said that this collapse, which he and I have known for almost a decade or more was coming, was really a collapse, a turbocharged collapse. And what do you think about that? We'd love to know. Why don't you email us, kl at kerrylutz.com, kl at kerrylutz.com. Tell us your thoughts. So the person you're about to hear from, somebody I've followed his work for better than a decade, uh, a real admirer of this person for his intellectual acumen and for his ability to cut through the noise and the BS particularly when it comes to precious metals, gold and silver, and also when it comes to the economic system and what the powers that be are really up to. I'm talking about Ted Butler. And Ted, we find your work at butlerresearch.com. That's B-U-T-L-E-R research.com. I highly recommend that you take a look at the site. Uh, first time you've been on the show, Ted, and we're really thrilled to have you. Uh, Gold has gone up. Silver has been stagnant. What the heck is going on in the world here? Hey, Carrie, it's uh, good to be with you. Um, boy, there's a lot of things going on in the world. Um, I think uh, most of the uh, pricing uh, influences um, still emanate and are dictated uh, on the uh, commodity exchange, Inc., the COMEX in uh, in New York, and. Uh, Boy, there's been a you know a lot of things happening, uh, not just recently, but uh, particularly over the last decade. Um, this has been uh, a ten-year uh, run or so that uh, uh, I would have never uh, predicted, uh, but yet it's uh, it's unfolding on a, on a day-by-day basis uh, in a manner that's uh, pretty easy to follow once uh, once you tune into it. Yeah. So. Tell us exactly what is going on. How come the markets for precious metals, you would argue, and I would agree, are not true price discovery markets, which is the purpose of a market, price discovery. What do things sell for? What are they bought for? We don't really have that in uh, the commodities sector, do we? Uh, certainly not in, uh, in, in gold and, and particularly in silver. Um, <clears throat> the price discovery that, that, that you speak of that in, the, uh, in the ideal abstract sense, uh, uh, the way it's supposed to be, is a, uh, is a free market uh, with uh, uh, equal representation on both the uh, buy and sell side, the producer and consumer side, and uh, th- that couldn't be uh, further from the truth from what's actually in practice. Uh, what's in practice is a uh, handful of uh, very large um, paper derivatives types traders, uh, not dealing uh, primarily in the physical, dealing in derivatives contracts, futures contracts. And it's been a, just a giant uh, tug of war. Um, and on, on, on the, both the buy and sell side by these very few large, um, large players that, uh, the, the craziest thing has happened. What we, we basically have is, um, the tail wagging the dog. We have a few paper traders, very large, very, uh, influential, um, dictating uh, to the real metal world, uh, the producers, the miners, the refiners, the ultimate consumers, the investors, uh, everybody has to take the price that it's made on the paper market, primarily uh, the COMEX. And uh, we can get into the specifics of who these large traders are and, and, and what's likely to come out on the other side of what I would consider this, you know, great distortion, this great experiment in uh, derivatives control of price. 
Yeah, and I'm inclined to agree with you because we see these identical trading patterns emerge every day at the same time, midnight, whatever it might be. We see uh, when metals prices start going high quickly, all of a sudden the they're met with an avalanche of derivative contracts to to help subdue the price increase. And yet the price has gone up substantially over the past uh, year. When I look at, uh, at the prices, well, past 30 days, uh, and this is for gold, not so much for silver, past 30 days, gold is up for almost 5%, almost $80. One year change, which is really kind of striking, is up 33%, $422 the ounce. So when you look at that, is that them losing control of the market, these large players, or is it them uh, getting out ahead of the market and letting it go up to key points and then driving it back? Uh, excellent point. Uh, excellent question. Uh, in, in my opinion, it's uh, uh, these big traders who have... Uh, previously control the price they're 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 losing control uh losing control particularly in in gold uh they haven't lost control in silver because silver hasn't moved that much in price but they they have uh seem to have lost control or in the process of losing control in uh in in gold definitely in fact uh um they the typical big traders, with one exception, which I'll get to in a second, that one exception is is J.P. Morgan. But uh, the big traders on the COMEX who typically go short did go short in gold roughly about uh, a year ago, starting in, in, in June, on the first move up um, uh, above $1,300, and have been basically on the short, short side stuck on, on the short side for the for the last year or so, and uh, have some pretty uh, sizable, the most sizable open losses that they've had in history, uh, to the tune of say the eight big shorts, which is the uh, the way the uh, the CFTC, the Commodity Commission, reports on uh, in the in the Commitment of Traders report. These large traders who uh, have never taken a loss. Uh, in the in the 35 years that uh, that I've been following it, um, are out a big amount. They're out the most they've ever been out. They're out about six or seven billion dollars, um, and that's just among eight traders in gold. And uh, you know this suggests that they, you know, they might might finally be losing control. They've they've never been in the hole financial hole like this before. Of course, the big exception uh, is, is the entity that used to be hmm. the biggest uh, short seller of all over the last 10 years or so, J.P. Morgan. Well, they've basically broken ranks uh, with the the eight big traders who they usually uh, align themselves with. And they've uh, managed to not only slide out and... Uh, Slip out the back jack of their short <laughs> position, J.P. Morgan, mm -hmm. and leave. They've left these other big shorts um, basically on their own. And uh, on top of everything else, uh, this J.P. Morgan has, uh, over the last nine years, uh, amassed and accumulated just an absolutely phenomenal amount of both physical gold and physical silver. I, I claim that the uh, J.P. Morgan has amassed like 25 million ounces of uh, of gold, of which they're ahead about 12 billion dollars as we speak uh, today, and they've amassed a, a billion, a full billion ounces of physical silver, which they're still in the hole a little bit. I'd say by two, three dollars or so, but uh, the combined physical position that J.P. Morgan owns in physical gold and silver has them ahead about uh, $10 billion net. And now for the first time, uh, basically ever, uh, they no longer hold a short position in either gold or silver on the COMEX. They've kind of left these other eight big shorts out to dry. And I claim that uh, it's like the perfect setup for the most massive 
double cross uh, in history. So um, I can't tell you when, uh-huh. but one of these days, uh, J.P. Morgan is about to uh, pull the noose tight around these uh, eight big shorts who they used to run with and uh, let them uh, flounder. Um, I Anyway, that's basically the way I see it. And when that day comes where gold is actually allowed to find its true price level, kind of like saying, well, when interest rates are allowed to find their actual natural rate, natural rate of interest and silver is allowed to find its natural value, what impact will that have upon the global financial system? Um, well, I'm, I'm sure it'll be somewhat unsettling, but there's, there's been plenty of, of other things that have been uh, unsettling. I mean, I look at the price and what, how the price of gold and sil- silver have been set over the last uh, three or four decades, and particularly the last 10 years or so. And uh, it's just, it, it, it's in a world of its own, of uh, particularly silver and uh, talk about artificially low. Um, it's going to come where it where it's set free, and the conditions look uh, more ripe for that happening than ever before. But you know, I've never been one to think that it automatically translates into you know uh, pestilence and famine and woe to the rest of the world just because the the metal prices are are going up, going up to where where they should be. It's uh, I, I I don't suggest that there won't be uh, great uh, financial weeping and gnashing of teeth if uh, as and when uh, silver and gold are, are truly set free. But I don't think there's necessarily a causal relationship. Um, I don't think metal prices going up is are necessarily bad for the world. They'll be real bad for the, the big shorts. Um, but that's you know, kind of preordained and that's like contained within the the market structure itself. Um, silver going up in price is not, you know, necessarily negative for anybody else uh, in the world not involved in it. But if you're involved in it on the, on the right side, on the long side, when this thing gets set free, you'll, 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 you'll be feeling mighty happy if you're, uh, aligned on the uh, the wrong side, the short side, which these uh, mostly just eight or ten big shorts are are, are are the entire short position to start with. Well, it's going to be you know woe to them, but it's been a long time coming, and uh, I for one would uh, would welcome it coming uh, uh, in the very near future. Yeah, the sooner the better. Couldn't agree with you more on that, and. As far as what those actual prices should be for those metals, do we have any idea what they should be? FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Trilogy Metals is a world-class developer in Alaska's Ambler Mining District. The company already possesses 8 billion pounds of copper, 3 billion pounds of zinc, over 1 million gold equivalent ounces, and now over 77 million pounds of cobalt. Trilogy's Arctic project boasts an after-tax net present value of $1.4 billion with a 33% IRR. Trilogy is led by an experienced management team with proven success in discovering and developing projects in Alaska. The company is well capitalized, has no debt, and possesses strong institutional support. Trilogy trades on the New York and Toronto exchanges under the ticker symbol TMQ. To learn more, go to TrilogyMetals.com. That's TrilogyMetals.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Well, um, you know, at at current prices, gold, you know, gold is not uh, uh, cheap on a historical basis. It's... uh, and. And, and in addition to that, um, gold is, uh, you know, there's plenty of room uh, to the upside, but I don't think that there's a mining company in the world that uh, that mines gold that, that can't be making a profit at current levels. They stand to make a lot more, and I, I think the, uh, the gains will be, you know, impressive without, uh, you know, throwing out too many crazy numbers. Certainly, uh, you know, I can see it going uh, 500 $1,000 higher. The big percentage gain, however, is going to be, I think, in, in silver, 
where this thing can uh, can rocket, you know, many many times its uh, its current price level because it's been so suppressed and so uh, de- depressed in, in 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 price for for so many years by by these same big shorts that uh, when it busts free, um, the the percentage gain in in silver would have to be you know much greater than uh, than they would be in gold plus. You know, silver is, uh, you know, such a tiny uh, market and uh, has a total market capitalization of, you know, just a fraction of, of what the all the gold in the world is worth. That when you when you have a small market or a small stock, you know, the, the percentage gains can be so much greater. Um, so I would think that uh, you know numbers in the in in, in, in triple digits. In uh, in silver, um, wow. you know, would seem to be, uh, you know, easily attainable. All right. So, and when we're looking at all the stimulus that's taking place now, all of the tricks they're doing, the Fed bailouts, everything else, it's almost counterintuitive that there wouldn't be any inflation. There's got to be inflation. Do you think that the real prices of gold and silver will, especially silver, advance? further than the actual uh, inflation of the currency, meaning the loss of purchasing power of the dollar? Well, yeah, I, I do, uh, mainly because of the, you know, the artificial suppression for, for, for so many years, so many decades. Um, you know, look, something has gone, you know, has happened with this, uh, with this tremendous creation of money. You don't know when you know, the, the impact is going to be felt, but you just know in your gut that, look, you just can't create, you know, trillions of dollars out of thin air and create, you know, trillions of dollars of new debt um, without some, you know, long-term repercussions or implications. You know, we're stuck in the, in the crisis right now, so we're not feeling, you know, the impact, the ultimate impact of all this money being created. But, uh, you know, if the answer was just to have governments worldwide just create as much um, new money, new buying power, new debt, okay, as as as, as anybody wants, um, you know, we never would have had, you know, business and credit cycles before. It's mm-hmm. like uh, if we yeah. could always, if this was the, the permanent answer for, you know, uh, for permanent prosperity, uh, it would have been, uh, uh, you know, undertaking long before now. This is, uh, there's going to be some really serious implications. That I, it's hard to argue with with inflation uh, uh, rearing its head in a, in a vicious way. Um, and certainly in any of this um, money creation cannot by any stretch of imagination be considered negative in any way towards gold or silver. I mean, it may prove to be negative for a lot of other things in the long run, but I try as I might, I, I can't think of, uh, of any way it would be <clears throat> negative for, uh, for gold or silver. Yeah. Yeah. I'm inclined to agree with you, but uh, strange things have been happening in these markets for so long that many of you out there are watching it and thinking it just is never going to do anything. Uh, a capitulation, giving up hope, all these things that they've, they've really chased people out of the market, haven't they? Yeah, no, no, there is, there has been an attrition. It wears you down. It, 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 this thing has been, well, at least you got, there's relief in gold. I mean, gold has rallied uh, substantially as you, as you pointed out over the last year or so. And uh, so that's not, you know, wearing on, on, on people, on investors. Um, uh, silver, no. Silver has been uh, has been uh, kept, uh, you know, under uh, you know lock and, and key here, and the price has not been around allowed to to rise in any way. And now we're at a, a situation where, in the entire history of a you know of, of, of civilization, which dates back about five thousand years in terms of recorded history. I mean, silver is just off the charts cheap relative to gold, and you know there's got to be an explanation. You don't you don't set by a dramatic amount 
a 5,000 year extreme in a very relative object comparison valuation of gold and silver and then not be a good reason for it. Um, and the re- only reason I can see it's uh, glaring at us is this uh, activity on the uh, the COMEX where the price is set. We have eight big shorts, short more silver, okay, in terms of real world production or consumption than any other commodity by far. And it's the sole reason why silver is priced so cheap. These eight big shorts who are, if, if they didn't have a short, if they didn't have a, a, the, the short position held by just eight traders, according to the government now, every, every week they come out with their commitment of traders report and they show the concentration data. The last report showed that eight traders were short 375 million ounces of silver, and that's like almost 50% of world production. It's almost 20% of all the silver in the world. If these guys didn't have this short position, there would be no uh, commercial short position on the COMEX. The entire short position is held by just Eight traders on on the COMEX. It's uh, they're not hedging anything. It's not mining companies locking in a loss. Okay, it's not uh, any kind of legitimate hedging. It's just eight big uh, banks, both uh, domestic and foreign, that have a manipulative short position, and they can't get out of it. They can't let go. The minute they go to buy back this short position. It's going to send the price to the roof uh, and it's through the roof. And it's like it's just a delaying game. So it's uh, it, it, now that J.P. Morgan, who used to be the biggest short, OK, over the last 10 years in both silver and gold have have extracted themselves, removed themselves from the from the short side completely and have this giant long position um, the, the, the remaining eight big shorts, uh, are just like, you know, walking, tiptoeing, uh, through a, through a landmine. One of these days, they're going to uh, step the wrong way. Uh, prices are going to catch a bid and they're not going to be able to keep selling as much as they've sold in the past. And I think they're going to give up the ghost and just panic to the upside. And, the, and when we get that rally, when that day it comes, um, it's going to be much more severe to the upside than it ever would have been had these uh, eight big shorts not manipulated the market for all these years. And all this is proven out in the in the U.S. government's own data, which they report weekly. It's just that you get used to something. It's been there for so long. People tend to disregard it. But uh, it's the data, I believe, that matter, and it explains why silver is so depressed in price and why, in turn, it won't be uh, someday and someday soon. Interesting. Very interesting that we could have gotten to this position. And uh, I guess in the blink of an eye, all of those ill-begotten gains from the past 10 years will be gone kind of just like uh, in the blink of an eye, all the employment gains over the past three years were gone and the stock market gains, all of it gone. And it'll be interesting to see what's left standing when that day finally comes. Well, we can't thank you enough for coming on the show, Ted, and for your contributions over the year, your work. You really were cutting edge at exposing the whole cartel, for lack of a better term, and the whole conspiracy, which is certainly what it is. We really appreciate you coming on. Just go check out butlerresearch.com. That's butlerresearch.com. Find Ted's work there. And we've got a link in the show notes, as always. You could just click it, get right there. Ted, we will talk to you again soon. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Kerry. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.